Okay, everybody, hello and welcome to this video. Today, we are deploying Office Included Amazon Machine Images on Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, with the License Manager. My name is James Scanlon, and I am a Senior Microsoft Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. So why should you use Microsoft Office Included AMI images on EC2? First, it means you can acquire a fully compliant AWS provided license of Microsoft Office and the Remote Desktop Services Cell or Subscriber Access license with a per user per month subscription fee. It empowers employees to work from anywhere and you can, of course, deploy these images across a broad choice of AWS instance types. All of the guidance from this video today is based on this AWS blog post. Please use the link here or, of course, scan the QR code to be taken straight to it. Let's go and step through the prerequisites. Step one, you should enable DNS host names and DNS resolution in your VPC. Step two, is configuring the DNS in your VPC and for any other additional VPCs to talk to the AWS managed Microsoft AD. For more information, you can see the first link that's available here at the bottom of the screen around how to configure that. Step three, ensure your instances can communicate with AWS Systems Manager. And that can be done either via direct internet access where your instances may be in a public subnet or you can configure Systems Manager VPC endpoints. And we've provided some more information around that at the second link here at the bottom of the slide. Step four, ensure that the instances have a route to the subnet where the VPC endpoints are provisioned. VPC endpoints must permit inbound TCP port 1688 connectivity. Um, and this is for office activation. And on the EC2 instances that you provision, you must allow inbound TCP port 3389. That's only if you were using remote desktop protocol or RDP. Um, of course, that should only be enabled from approved sources into your EC2 instances. Uh, do note though, that here you can also leverage Amazon Systems Manager or SSM, and you can leverage the Fleet Manager feature to be able to connect to these instances without even having to open TCP port 3389. Step seven, you must have an instance profile role attached to the EC2 instances to be managed by Systems Manager. And there is a link here at the bottom of this slide specifically around how to configure that. Step eight, we're gonna of course provision the users that will access Office on the Amazon EC2 instances in the AWS managed Microsoft Active Directory. So quite a lot of prerequisites there. Let's go and talk through now the high level steps on how we can configure this all together before we go through our demonstration. So first up, to use Office on Amazon EC2, you will need to complete the following steps. First, we go through and we configure License Manager in our account. It can also be configured in sub accounts, uh, but the managed Active Directory must be in the same account that your EC2 instances are running in. There's two products that we need to subscribe to in the AWS Marketplace so that those products are available in your account and so that you can then launch them and assign them to users. Uh, we're going to launch an Amazon EC2 instance with a user-based subscription. And then finally, we're going to connect to that instance with the user credentials that are managed by our AWS Microsoft Active Directory. Let's go and have a look now through our demonstration. The first step is how we're going to configure License Manager in our AWS account. Let's go ahead and do that now. I've logged into my AWS console and simply search for AWS License Manager. I've also favorited it by selecting the star. The first thing we want to do is scroll down on the left here to Settings. And under settings, we're going to select user-based subscriptions. And it's here that we configure our AWS license manager to talk to our AWS managed Microsoft AD. I'm going to select my Active Directory here. 
and I'm specifically and only going to select the Office Professional Plus, which, as we know from our prerequisites, it needs to create a VPC endpoint so that the Office product can be licensed. I'm going to select my specific production VPC, and I'm now going to select the subnets I would like to deploy my VPC endpoints in to. And finally, I have a security group configured for these VPC endpoints here, which allows port TCP 1688 into those VPC endpoints only from my VPC and nowhere else. Happy with those settings, I'm going to go ahead now and click configure. While we're waiting for this configuration, move on to the next step, which is to subscribe to our products in the marketplace. So in the AWS License Manager console, if we scroll down to products, and here are the products that we can license as part of the License Manager user-based subscriptions. I'm going to select Office Professional Plus, view details, and then I'm going to view this product in the AWS Marketplace where I can subscribe to this software. Here I'm going to click on the orange continue to subscribe button. I'm going to accept the terms. And at this point, the software is now available in my account. I also need to repeat these steps for the remote desktop services. If we go back to license manager, go back to products, I'm going to repeat the same process for the remote desktop services subscriber access license. If I select that and click view in AWS Marketplace, it's here that we can subscribe to the RDS cell as well. I'm going to go ahead now and subscribe to the access for this product. Keep in mind, this is not subscribing any users to these products yet. So at this point, we will not be charged. When we're happy that we've subscribed to both Office and the RDS cell, and you can see here, Remote Desktop Services and Office Professional are both now active under the Marketplace subscription status. So you can see now that our AWS Managed Microsoft AD has been configured for use with AWS License Manager for the following configured products. You can see the specific VPC where our VPC endpoints have been configured, and you can see the associated security group there. It's now time to go to the EC2 console and simply deploy a new EC2 image based on the Office AMI. Let's go and do that now. I can click on EC2 as a favorite, or I can just type EC2 in the search bar and go and open EC2. Once I'm in the EC2 console, I can simply click the orange Launch Instance button. Here, I'm going to call this My Office AMI. And we can search for our Office AMI simply by typing the name into the search function. The search is completed and under AWS Marketplace AMI, we have one image. We can go ahead and click select on this specific image and click continue. We can click the confirm changes here for these settings to be overwritten. And now we can deploy the instance after we change some configurations. Let's just briefly scroll down and have a look at the settings that have been configured as part of this AMI. You can see here this, the default instance type is an M4X large. And you'll note, key pair name at the moment is not selected. We can just change and drop that to any of the key pairs we may have in the account. Because this is Active Directory joined, you don't need a specific key pair. Now here under the network settings, we're going to have to change the configuration and the VPC our instance is deployed into. I'm going to click the edit button here on network settings. And it's here where I can select the VPC I want to place my instance into. And of course the subnet where I want my instance to run. 
You can see by default it wants to create a security group or you can select an existing security group. I have gone and selected a security group that by default allows RDP or TCP port 3389. As we scroll down I'm going to expand advanced details. And two things of note. The domain join directory information here is grayed out, so you can't change that because that is automatically managed by License Manager. And I'm going to choose an existing IAM role that I've already created for this instance to talk to SSM. And this role gives the EC2 instance the ability to auto domain join and to talk to SSM. At this point, there were no other configurations that I need to make or change on this launch wizard. So I can simply go ahead now and click Launch Instance. In the EC2 Instances window, you can see my EC2 Instance is creating. It's currently initializing. And if we go and look under the AWS License Manager, under User Association, you can also see the Instance ID and the Instance Configuration Status is preparing. At this point, we will wait for the EC2 Instance to complete before we try and log in. It is now time for us to associate a user to this instance from our AWS Managed Microsoft AD. And we could do that by specifically selecting the instance ID and subscribing and associating a user. And it's at this point that once the subscription is successful, the account will start being billed for the Office subscription. So let's go ahead now and click on the subscribe and associate users. And it's here that I can simply enter the username of the user in my Microsoft Managed AD. We'll wait for the user association to, to apply to this new instance. And at that point, once the user is associated with the instance, we will be able to log in via RDP or even using something like SSM Fleet Manager. So now that our user has successfully associated to our instance, we can go to the EC2 console. We can find our instance. Let's click Connect. Let's click RDP Client. And let's download the remote desktop file. When we click and run the file, you can see it's asking for our username and password. I'm going to type in my Active Directory username and password, and the session should begin. Here now, I'm on the desktop of my EC2 instance, and if I scroll down here to the Start button, you can see all of the Office applications pre-installed, and we can scroll down and open one. So this concludes our brief technical demonstration on how you can configure the AWS License Manager user subscriptions features and subscribe to the Office software in the AWS Marketplace. I hope this video has been helpful to you and we look forward to presenting to you in another video soon.